All right, hey there, Amy394. So I wanted to take just a little bit of time uh, to look at control panels just a little bit more closely because I know some of you got some questions about like, ah, how does all this stuff work? So let's go ahead and make just a simple setup here. So I'm going to have movie, file in. Right, I just want to have something kind of uh, that as closely resembles the kind of thing that we're making as possible. Got an out. Great. So this thing's got a video in it, or some kind of movie file, right? Uh, and then when we zoom out of it, we also have another container. And this container is control. Great. And we want to set some storage here for this guy, right? So we just need to write a quick uh, script for this. Me dot parent. So in my parent, I want to store something called width. Would help if I could spell. Uh, and this is going to be 1280 wide. And I also want to store height. I'll go ahead and just borrow that since I've already written it. 720. Great. And I can set storage by running this script. Bingo, bango. We come out here. I can turn on the parameters for this and then I can fetch that me.fetch and I just need to know width is the thing that it's called excellent and if you're paying close attention you'll notice that sure enough I set those dimensions incorrectly Right, because in the assignment it actually says 1024 by 768 should be the dimensions of your control. Well, the handy thing about storage is that we can come in here and we can just change these, right? 1024 by 768. And when we, when we run this script again, it's going to go ahead and update, update those values in storage for us. And it just went ahead and passed those right here into our control panel. So when we view it, we can see that it's the right dimension. All right. Cool. So we'll leave that guy over here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy in all of the widgets that I've already built that we made last week, right? All right. So here are all my button things. And they're all stacked down here in the kind of lower left-hand corner. Okay. So how do I start to think about how these things are arranged? Right? So there are a couple of different ways that I might think about doing that. First of all, we kind of built all of these purposely so that they would scale really easily. Um, so if you think back to how we set these up, especially like our sliders and our buttons, right? So let's scoot this guy down here so we can take a closer look at it. If we look inside here, we can see that uh, we're using this math to actually go ahead and um, pull out the values that are stuck in our parent. We're defining the resolution of this guy based on what our parent is. So we know that if we just turn up the size of this thing, right? Because if we view it right now, we can see that it's pretty tiny. If I want a bigger slider, right? I want something that's like, I don't know, maybe 300 wide and more like, mm, maybe I want it to be like, uh, I don't know, 60 tall. Now when I view it, now I've got a much more substantial looking slider. And it's kind of scaled right along with me the way that I want it. Now we might want to turn our text up, right? And we could turn our text up just by diving inside here. I'm going to the font page. And we could turn the text size up. Yeah, better. All right, so now we've got one bigger slider. And we could do that with any of our components. I'm going to go ahead and view my control panel here. And we can see now this slider is uh, a little more juicy, right? That's more exciting. And we, if we take a look at our 2D slider, right? If we Take a look inside here, Let's scoot that out of the way. One of the things that we did is we set up the size of the knob inside of this to be based on a, a kind of division by 10, a tenth of the size of this thing, of its parent. 
So if we were to say turn this up to being more like, I don't know, uh, 300 by 300 in size, right? We can see that if we view it, it's turned itself up. Yeah, that's nice. Excellent. And if we bring our control panel over here, oops. Oh, we lost our sliders outside. Let's take a quick gander. There they are. Like they might be just like, nope, there they are. Excellent. Right, so there's one way that we can start to think about just kind of getting some real estate back, right? Like just building some bigger control interface elements. Um, they're already set up to scale the way that we built them based on the expressions that we used. So we can just kind of turn up their size and know that they're going to carry right along with us. The one exception to that rule is probably going to be this guy right here, right? Our, can, our feed force our um, feedback slider. Because this guy, um, we didn't use any expressions inside to set the width and height based on its parent. So we might, right, we could think about, well, what would that look like? Um, one way that we could think about what that might look like is we could certainly set the height, because the height's going to be the same for both of these. So we could use the height, me.parent, dot height. And that's not actually right, because in this case, we want par.h. Let's grab that again, and we'll reuse it over here. So that means that if we turn up the height on this guy, we make it 40, for example. When we uh, view it, we can see that, OK, that's better. But the same is not going to be true for the width. If we turn the width up to, say, like 200, whoops. Let's undo whatever I did there. Yowza. All right, let's make it uh, 60 tall. If we make it 200 wide. OK, now we've just got all this kind of blank space over here. So we might want our text to stay kind of like this small little value. I don't know. You might think about what do you want this thing to look like. We could certainly scale this guy out over to the side by coming in here and setting the width of this to be me.parent dot par dot w and then subtracting 36 because what we did is we set oops 36 not 35 we set the width of this guy over here to being 36 so now we can see that that will scale a little bit for us and again if we view it all right so one thing we can do right off you know right out the gate is uh, we can go ahead and make these things bigger and we can trust that That'll kind of carry right along with us. But that still might not solve some of our problems, right? When we look at the viewer, they're still kind of all stuck down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So we did learn that we could take advantage of digits to solve one of these problems, right? Especially if we have multiples of something, uh, that can help solve a problem. But our digits might not help us here just in this case, right? Because we've got button 1, slider 3, slider 2, slider 1, container 1. So what we have to start to think about um, as we're making some arrangements here is how we want these things to be kind of composed and put together, right? So we might imagine that we have, that we want a series of sliders to be stuck together, right? So for example, let's take this slider over here and we might think about the fact that I want this slider, I want my sliders to be, um, red, green, and blue, right? So I've got a red slider here, and let's go ahead and make, I might even want an alpha also, right? So I've got red, let's change this one to green, we'll bounce out, and in one more time, right? Blue, and this one could be alpha. Great. Now, I maybe, you know, and this is a personal preference. In terms of how I'm setting up a control panel, I kind of want all of these things to be tidally kept together. And I might even want them to have, like, a header that went along with them so I knew exactly what they were all about. So how could I go about doing that? Well, one way that I could start to think about solving that problem is I could use hierarchy, right? So I could go ahead and grab uh, another container, 
and I could start to build these guys in a hierarchy here. So these have got digits, one, two, three, four, right, in order. So let's go ahead and take advantage of those, me.digits. Uh, me.digits, great. We're going to connect all of those here to this guy, to this container. And let's go ahead and in this container, uh, let's set this to align top to bottom. Great. All right, so now we've got red, green, blue, alpha. I do have all this extra space over here that I don't want, though. Okay, so how could I fix that? Well, I'm going to take a look over here, and I can see that this guy's width is 200. So I only want this one's width to be 200. Great. Now I'd love for this to have a header. All right, so how could I have it? How could I make a header for it? Well, one way that I could make a header really easily is I could grab another container, right? And I might call this, just call it header zero. And again, take advantage of me.digits, me.digits. And I want this thing to be the same width as these guys. I want it to be 200 wide. But I want it to be just a little bit shorter. I don't want it to be quite the same thickness. So maybe I'll change it to like 30, for example. Oops, I don't want to change all of those. I just want to change this one. All right, great. So now I've got this guy that's just kind of hanging out here, waiting for some attention. Let's go ahead, dive inside, and to give this, make this guy into a header, uh, or to give it a title, uh, we might use a text top. Right, this should look familiar. And we'll go ahead and pull the res resolution from the parent, me.parent par width. and height. Excellent. And we can see that maybe our text here is a little bit too large. We can turn that down. And maybe I want this to say color, right, as the kind of header information here for me. Great. All right. And I'd like this to be on top of something a little more interesting than just alpha. So let's go here to our color page, and let's pick a background color. This may be a little more interesting. Uh, like, I'm going to use this kind of deep burgundy-ish, magenta-ish color. I'll turn that all the way up. And let's zoom out here. OK, well, what gives? Well, remember, we've got to set the background. We've got to set the background of that container to be this operator. It's called text1. So we can do that in the panel page here dot slash text one, look inside of me for the thing called text one. Now I'd also like this to have some borders on it, because I think that looks a little nice. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my borders on here. Great. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in to this other guy. Bink. Excellent. Now I still have a little bit of space here at the bottom. And if we take a look, this is um, 60 tall. So I just need to change the size of this thing, the height of it. So we could do this with math, right? If we don't want to do it ourselves, we could say 60 times, which is the asterisk, 4. That's the number of things that we have that are 60. And then I want to add something that's just 20 tall. Right? Ooh, that should be 30, actually. Excuse me. Excellent. So now, if we take a look at this, right? So using hierarchy, what I've done is I've just kind of stacked all these things together, right? I've kind of put all of these um, different elements and arranged them the way that I want them uh, composed into this other container. And if we go ahead and look at um, our control panel here, well, where did it go? Well, we can't see it right now um, because we actually need to move it to a place where we can see it. So another way that we can think about how we arrange control panels and how we put, place things inside of our networks is in the container, right? In the container that I want to move, and that could be a slider or a button, it could be anything. I can set the X and Y values for that. So I can manually arrange these, right, to be in a position that I want. So I might want this to be all the way flush to the left side. And I might want it to be here, real close to the top. And I could kind of like dial it in here so it's right there at the very top. 
And I might want to just go ahead and give this whole thing a margin of like 5 pixels. There we go. So now, all right, that's looking, this starting to be interesting, right? So I've got this thing that's color, right? I might even want to do uh, something a little more interesting in here and think about, well, okay, well, how is this composed? What's interesting about uh, what information I'm conveying here, right? If I wanted to be really fancy, I might take a look at this. And let's look at this guy. Good. And we can see it's background red. If we look over here, we can see the background color is this kind of gray color. So what if we define this background color with the sliders operation itself? Because we could certainly do that. Right, so let's look at our background color. Let's turn uh, green down to zero and blue down to zero, and we've got red. Great. So what I want to have happen is that as this goes all the way to one, this number becomes one. And as this goes down to zero, yoink, the background becomes zero. Right? That's not too hard to do. We can use a simple expression for that. So I'm going to define this value with the operator that's located inside called, ooh, it might be null. Well, let's go take a look. I want the thing called out1. Great. So I want the thing, let's write this correctly, that's inside of here called out1. Oh, oh bother, I did that wrong. Let's fix that. Great, out1. And I want the channel from that called v1. Oh, I got the name wrong. Oh, it's called chan1. There it is. Chan1. Great. So now as I move this slider, Aha! Right? And I could even take this. Let's copy that. And let's take advantage of the fact that we could do the same thing over here. I'm going to use it for green. And I'm going to use the same thing over here for blue. So now I've got sliders um, that actually, uh, let's go ahead and view these. Right, so they change the amount of color that they represent based on where the slider is. Okay, great. That's handy. That's interesting or novel or different. Or who knows? That could be any number of things. So let's, oh. Okay, cool. Um, let's zoom out here. Yeah, okay. And we can see that that's still jamming up here at the top. So that's one way we can take advantage of hierarchy to kind of figure out what's going on in this guy. Right? We could also, um, right? So this is one way that we think about how we arrange sliders. Um, or in this case, sliders using hierarchy to solve a particular problem. But we can also do the same thing by encapsulating them. Kind of, you know, two ways to skin a cat, if it, as it were. So I might have a container like this. And let's say this is a little smaller, maybe like 150. And 150. And let's imagine that I have four of these that I want to stick in a quadrant, right? I want one, two, three, four. Okay, how could I do that? Well, first of all, I know that this needs to be more like 300 by 300, right? I need a big square. I need to put this inside of there, so let's copy it in. Great. And let's dive inside. Let's take advantage of our digits again, me.digits. And let's make four of these. All right, so now we've got one, two, three, four of these 2D sliders. Let's back out here and let's arrange these um, top to bottom. So we should have one, two, three, four. It's fallen off the side here. So we need to say that we only want two per line. All right, this feels a little bit too tight to me. I want a little bit of space here. I want maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say four pixels in between these. But now my spacing isn't right, right? What do I do? Well, I just need to make sure that I may add four to the size of my container to compensate for 
uh, the offset that I've added. And if we view this, now we can see that I've got four different 2D sliders. Right? Cool. That's groovy. There are lots of things we might want to be able to do with that. It's really great for like corner pinning something, for example. Um, if you're doing like a little bit of arrangement on an object, that can be a really handy way to think about how we manipulate the corners of an object. And again, right, so let's, um, well, no, let's leave that there. Let's back out. We'll close this. And we can see now, okay, there we've got this thing called color. I've got my sliders over here. I'm going to have to start to think about, all right, well, maybe where do I want to think about putting those? Oops. So I'd have to think about, okay, well, I want them over here on the far side. Yeah, okay, I like that. Ooh, looks like it's a little too far. Yeah, maybe more like that. Jamming. Well, let's go up just a little bit. Great. Right, so now I also need to think about, well, you know, woo, whoops. What are the other things that I have and, and where do they live? And so that's, that's really one of the challenges that you have in front of you at this point, right, is how do you arrange your control panel in a way that makes sense to you? Uh, do you want to give things names or titles like right do you want them to have this kind of um, title that goes on top of them do you just want to rely on the labels that are inside of the particular sliders to help you figure out what a particular thing does how do you want it to operate and function and so that's that right there is the challenge for you to consider. That's the, you know, one of the big things here in this particular assignment is how are you arranging your control panel in an interesting way that conveys the image that we want it to convey? Um, and also, how is it then, con not how is it then con uh, connected, whew, excuse me, uh, to your visualizer over here, right? Because you're building a front end to a very complex chop network that you've already constructed. So what is it that you want to control? And what does that control look like? All right. I hope that helps. And I'm very excited to see what you guys make. Happy programming.